worst case scenario, probably at only 0.6%. What's the battle plan of government's economic team against this looming recession? We discuss in this episode of The Chiefs. Magandang gabi po. Welcome to this special episode of the, Ch- of the Chiefs. We're in quarantine mode. I'm live from Cherapura in Tandang Sora in Quezon City. And joining us in this episode is Social Economic Planning Secretary Ernesto Pernia. Secretary Pernia, welcome to our quarantine. Welcome to the Chiefs. Yes, uh, thank you for having me again. Uh, this is, uh, you know, not... Uh, this is uh, rather uh, out of season, uh, okay. given that it's a different, uh, you know, uh, circumstance. Okay, kamusta po kayo? Uh, okay, well, we, uh, I'm doing fine, and uh, it's just that uh, working at home uh, these days is uh, even more stressful than working yes, in the office or having meetings uh, in other uh, agencies, in, in, in Malacanang, for example. <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, this one is uh, more stressful because everything has to be done aura mismo. Tapa. Well, yeah. is speaking Static. of stressful, so speaking of stressful and aura mismo, this is going to be a shorter episode, so we're going to dive straight into it. Maybe please give us uh, your assessment first of kumusta ang bayan, kumusta ang economy. Of course, everybody understood na tigil muna ang lahat ng bagay, tigil muna ekonomiya, but in real terms, what does what does that mean? Give us a picture of what's happening all around the country, or for that matter, what's not happening all over the country. Well, uh, economic economic activity has uh, plummeted. I mean, uh, in uh, Luzon, for example, with, which is uh, the uh, subject of this uh, enhanced quarantine, is that uh, uh, the only activity that's going on. Uh, uh, are those activities having to do with food, with feeding people, but other economic activities that are more uh, generative of employment, mm. manufacturing, for example, tourism, uh, travel and tourism, uh, those are you know off uh, completely off the uh, radar screen these days. And so but let's talk let's talk about what's what is going on let's talk about a, for for whatever it's worth if it's all about food and it's all about the supply at least they, how is that going uh, there have been reports about uh, uh, congestion at the ports um, containers uh, uh, piling up do we take it that there's a problem as well in in getting supplies even the needed supplies out of uh, out of our ports uh, I think it's because uh, the ports also are I think uh, practicing uh, skeletal force. Hmm. They are not uh, the whole uh, complement of uh, workers in the ports, in the customs, for example. So, uh, you know, there's a tendency for, you know, the cargo to be uh, unloaded or, you know, even uh, just uh, set aside. Hmm. Uh, also, truckers. Uh, many truckers are not moving. I mean, um, the, the drivers of these trucks are not uh, probably also trying to quarant- quarantine themselves. Hmm. So it's uh, it's really a mess in terms That's of right. you know what uh, should be going on in terms of economic activity. What about the activity on on the agriculture side, on local agriculture, food manufacturing? Uh, how is that? working or, or not working? No, f- uh, food manufacturing, farming, for example. Farming is uh, okay. It's, uh, it's, uh, there's no prohibition on farming work. And uh, that is because uh, you need uh, the uh, output of the farming sector. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, that's it about farming. Uh, but uh, farming is, uh, again, as I've said, it, it's not a very employment generative uh, yes. activity, mm. economic activity. Mm. And, yes, uh, and, and, yeah. 
Yes, and, and, and obviously it's not, uh, that's not the main, it, it is a big concern for people, the security of their jobs. We understand that it's not, that, that uh, employment generation is not necessarily the thing that we're looking at right now. We're trying to secure everyone. There are, there are disturbing images um, as well as videos and reports today coming out of Quezon City of, of people uh, becoming desperate for, for food. Uh, ostensibly, I mean, what do you what do you see into this? Is that is that an isolated incident, or do we in fact anticipate more of this uh, unrest uh, spilling out of 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 the homes where we are trying to keep all, keep people contained, but at the same time understand if people are getting I mean, very very anxious. Well, the uh, law on the Bayanihan to heal us one. Uh, that's uh, supposed to the 200 billion uh, pesos out of 275 uh, billion pesos. Uh, 200 billion uh, pesos are supposed to provide, uh, you know, is, is, uh, well, essentially social amelioration, hmm. uh, you know, social uh, safety nets for these, uh, for, uh, for poor people, uh, those who are, you know, who, ha you, who are on uh, daily wa wage, uh, no work, no pay, and then uh, contractual workers, and there are many of them. And uh, the, I think the problem is more like uh, they're cooped up in their smaller houses and, uh, you know, they uh, probably uh, spouses are, you know, getting on each other's nerves <laughs> and... Uh, uh, no children, uh, you know, children will probably uh, getting restless uh, and, uh, you know, looking for things to do. So I think yeah. that is uh, more the uh, the cause of this uh, restlessness, not so yeah, much. I mean, that. Yeah, I, I have no doubt that the things that you that you mentioned are all legitimate uh, phenomena and, and experiences. A lot of people uh, can, can relate to that. But are you saying, therefore, that this is not a supply issue? Uh, in, in, as far as food is concerned, it's not a supply issue because, in fact, there are so many uh, companies that are giving away food, like San Miguel and uh, SM and uh, several other uh, big companies are giving giving away, or, uh, you know, uh, donating uh, to, okay. to you know to uh, food to the disadvantaged, uh, marginalized uh, members of uh, our society, and. Uh, uh, the thing is, uh, many of these uh, in the poorer sectors are also unemployed. And so mm. well, they're getting food, but that's not enough. I mean, they, they have other needs, mm. and, uh, you know, other uh, uh, bills to pay, like uh, they have to have water. And, mm. you know, one of the things that we need to do is, uh, is frequent washing of hands, right? But... Mm. Uh, how do you expect uh, these uh, those uh, living in uh, informal se uh, settlements uh, to be having water that they can wash their hands with uh, frequently? So it's okay. uh, really a very uh, it's a there's a class uh, you know connotation to this whole thing. Yes, uh, and, and, and certainly I think uh, we've seen this in social media. It's one of the most legitimate messages out there. We're all experiencing the quarantine in very different ways. There are people who are obviously much better well off, and then there are people who are really, really vulnerable. Speaking of those that are most vulnerable, you mentioned the 200 billion social safety net. Do we have clarity on how exactly that's going to be delivered, in what form, by what mechanisms? Well, uh, food packs are being delivered already. Uh, the other... Uh, uh, form in which uh, the 200 bi uh, billion will be uh, distributed will be financial assistance, something like uh, for Metro Manila uh, households of uh, five uh, eight thousand pesos uh, mm -hmm. a month, and for for uh, those in the provinces uh, outside Metro Manila, it's five five thousand. This that will be the, in cash, or in, this will be in cash, in kind, or a combination. In in, in in cash, because the kind is the the food, the food packs that are being distributed. Okay, so the eight thousand in cash, and then on top of that, some food packs. Yes, the, uh, the uh, distributed by DSWT. And okay, I, uh, now, 
Yeah, right. and now we're to- uh, yeah, now we've been talking about as you as you said, people are getting restless. Um, and the main question for for everyone uh, right now is, kailan po ba tayo pwedeng makalaya? Are we in fact looking at uh, something happening by the end of this this first round of quarantine? We said April 14. Are we in fact looking forward to to something changing in the arrangements after April 14? I think uh, at the uh... At least there will be some changes. Uh, it's not going to be this kind of lockdown that we are in. There will be some lifting of uh, lockdowns in uh, certain areas, especially outside Metro Manila. Okay. Uh, yeah, as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there are certain uh, metrics that we're trying to discuss. And one, one of them is uh, two persons or less who are COVID positive in a, in a barangay, for example, will mm-hmm. be considered uh, you know safe uh, for lifting the quarantine. Uh, okay. Another another metric is the doubling time of uh, the uh, discovery of positive cases. Okay. Uh, in Metro Manila, uh, it used to be every three day, three three to seven days, and uh, in a, in other areas, it's only it takes a uh, 30 days to, do- okay. to double to double the number of cases. So, so let me get this clear. If you're saying, uh, if, if this is all theor- um, uh, not theoretical, but these are some of, as you said, the metrics that we're working around. For uh, if indicators, for example, are the, on the number of cases per barangay that may yeah. qualify or disqualify your area from a from a partial lifting another metric is as you said the doubling time of cases in a particular area did you get that right yes uh, those are being discussed uh, no, no, no finality to those uh, metrics yet okay. uh, we will, uh, the the finality uh, of uh, the the metric in terms of metrics or criteria for lifting or just extending the quarantine will be finalized by next week okay so we know so we know the indicators we don't necessarily know uh the threshold for those metrics in other words when does it kick in in terms of doubling time or not okay that's correct and whether you know uh, there'll be you know a majority of uh, 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 agencies and uh, participants in the interagency task force would uh, uh, would Hmm. favor a particular metric or set of metrics okay. okay but let's assume and uh, okay uh my i announced now in by whatever form it will look like in announced na now so again we will start to to uh, loosen the quarantine what will a an initial partial lifting of the quarantine look like well uh i think uh well the uh, the discussion has been most uh, something like uh, maybe Metro Manila will continue to have uh, uh, quarantine, but mm-hmm. probably lighter, uh, lighter than uh, you know the way it's uh, being enforced now. Uh, in other in other uh, areas outside Metro Manila, uh, there'll be a number of uh, places where you know quarantine will probably probably be totally lifted. Or partially, in, yeah. Into some areas. Yes, in some areas. Okay. When we say partial, that's going to be a lifting by uh, going by geography, going by sector. Uh, uh, how do we? How do we? I mean, which which comes first? Is it is it a determination purely by geography, going by the metrics that you mentioned, or are there certain sectors that will be uh, that will be how do you say it? Uh, allowed to to generate some some uh, some some activity ahead of others. Uh, well, it will it will have to be uh, geograph- geography because uh, then uh, we have to look at the transportation, the ease yeah. of uh, uh, movement, the mobility yeah. of uh, people within an area. Yes, but when you say within an area, are we also saying that once we loosen up the mobility of people? What it will be intra-city first, or are we in fact allowing people to then move the entire uh, uh, length of uh, Edsa north to south, crossing four to five cities? 
Now, it would be, uh, you know, uh, for example, two adjacent towns or yeah, uh, an, a, a city and then an adjacent town, if they are, uh, if the, the quarantine is lifted, then I guess they can cross over or something like that. Yeah. So okay. I, I'm, I'm still not, uh, there's nothing concrete yet. As I've said. Yes, and, yeah, and certainly we're not holding anybody here to to, uh, to hard and fast and certain finally, certainly final uh, solution here. We know it's a messy, uh, it's a messy situation just untangling this. Yeah. But, but go, maybe, going to that, what is the messiest thing that's, that's, what is the hardest thing for you to comprehend right now in terms of trying to, trying to untangle this quarantine and loosening the, the restrictions on all of us? What's the hardest thing to deal with? Well, if uh, you know if it's going to be uh, extended, uh, uh, to uh, toto uh, in toto, then okay. you know, uh, in totality it will be extended, and that's that's really going to be uh, tough on yeah on on the economy and on uh, on society and on uh, you know on people, yeah. workers, on uh, uh, on. The economic activity they've been doing, farming yes. or manufacturing, mm. or yeah. mm. deciding yeah. on uh, on the possibility on the other on the other side of uh, deciding to lift the restrictions, the making the decision to extend it, will it purely be a public health question, or is it going to be at the same time an economic question as well? In other words. Uh, are we also considering whether or not at a certain point it's possible that the socioeconomic implications actually outweigh uh, the public health implications? I don't want to lighten or overburden either side of the argument. I'm just trying to raise the question, is it purely a public health question or is it going to be an economic question as well? Oh, uh, the, you know, the, oh, there has to be a delicate balancing between health objectives and economic objectives here. Because uh, uh, you know you cannot uh, just uh, consider one, say health, for example, and then neglect the economic uh, dimension, because uh, then it could lead to social uh, a social crisis when you know mm -hmm. people are, as, as we have said earlier, restless. They're looking for work, and uh, they are just uh, cooped up in their small houses, uh, as well as uh, you know, yeah, and. Uh, so pe uh, people are eager to work. So, okay. and if they are there, they don't have work. They, they just get uh, dole outs, and but uh, those dole outs are not going to be enough. It's not going to be. It's not going yeah. to be pleasing to people if uh, it, uh, it it goes on uh, longer than okay. uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Secretary, at this point, I'd like to bring in the president of the Pamantasa ng Lunsod ng Maynila, the founding president and chief economist of Credit Rating and Investor Services Philippines, economics professor at the Asian Institute of Management, uh, Professor Emmanuel Leco. Professor, welcome to the Chiefs. Uh, good evening. Thank you. And uh, good evening, Secretary Pernia. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Professor uh, Leiko, I think you've been listening in on the discussions. What are the big questions for you uh, as you contemplate when should we lift the, the quarantine? What should trigger a lifting of the quarantine? And how will a, such a lifting look like? Okay. Uh, I think, uh, first of all, uh, we should not lose uh, focus on why the quarantine was uh, imposed. Uh, first of all, uh, we're dealing with a uh, pandemic, and therefore uh, we have to look at uh, indicators, whether the uh, pandemic is being uh, put under control here in our country or not. So uh, if there are more new cases, uh, uh, higher fatalities, if the pandemic is uh, spreading uh, outside uh, uh, national capital region and more into uh, Luzon and mm -hmm. other areas in the country, that those will be the indicators whether or not uh, we are going to uh, uh, see uh, the end of the problem. Now, there might be pressures, uh, economic pressures for uh, the government to uh, lift uh, the, uh, uh, the quarantine, uh, 
uh, and perhaps uh, we will have to go on a selective uh, basis. But mm. then uh, it will be uh, difficult uh, to uh, be uh, uh, overwhelmed by the economic impact of uh, the uh, 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 the lockdown or the uh, expanded uh, uh, quarantine because uh, uh, people are already feeling it. I think uh, the indications that uh, some uh, uh, residents are already pressing for more support and they are yeah. not getting it. Uh, yeah, Professor uh, Professor Leiko, uh, only because we, we, we don't have uh, a lot of time, I did want to ask this question. When we talk about okay. selectivity, yes. uh, we, we tend to think of Metro Manila. But are we in fact looking at this as this state of quarantine on a national level, now is this in fact, to all intents and purposes, a, a national quarantine or is it in fact still Metro Manila? In other words, are there still activities going on nationwide uh, in, in other regions that is worth looking at uh, in terms of, well, yeah? Necessarily, we have to look at uh, the whole country. However, uh, when we lock down Metro Manila, we are locking down the nerve center of our economic mm. activities. And therefore, the impact of uh, locking down Metro Manila will be felt throughout the country. Yeah. But is it, are there, uh, are there uh, quote unquote, other engines of the economy right now? that you look to as potential bright spots or uh, or as, as, as potential areas that could still generate activity and uh, I mean, provide whatever advantages uh, uh, we, we need. Actually, uh, before coming on, I was looking at other areas where we think uh, we can find the bright spot, but I keep on stumbling into uh, a potential problem. So, for example, uh, we've been looking at uh, foreign remittances as the major uh, factor in our economic growth. And it looks like uh, uh, the United States, Europe, and other parts of the country are also uh, getting into the uh, economic uh, slowdown. So, I would suppose that uh, the impact uh, uh, in the Philippines would be a reduced uh, remittance. If we were getting $2 billion a month uh, before this, I think we'll be lucky if we get a billion dollars, uh, considering that the uh, uh, economies where uh, foreign uh, or overseas Filipino workers are uh, hosted, their own economies are also having problems. So uh, I... I, I couldn't pin down, I couldn't put my finger on uh, where we can look at uh, uh, positive uh, side of uh, our economy. I'm sorry if I sound like this, but... Uh, no. no, but I mean, that actually raises a question, Secretary Perdi. At this point, everybody's... Uh, I, I was speaking to some economists from the University of the Philippines. They came out with a paper, uh, as you know. And then yeah. if, I'm, if I'm getting the message wrong, which is which my inter, my understanding of it is, look, we keep talking about the recession. There's no point in trying to avoid the recession. In other words, at this point, the most constructive thing right now is to embrace the fact that it is going to be a recession, and therefore go mm -hmm. into uh, into protection mode uh, for for our yes. people. Did yes. I get that correctly, Secretary Pernia? And yes, Mr. Leiko. Uh, well, yeah, in a way, uh, that's one way of looking at it. But uh, I don't know why a recession has to be intentional. Hmm. You know, it can be avoided. Uh, one should try to find ways of avoiding a recession. Hmm. Because uh, it's not going to be easy to get out of a recession. Hmm. Uh, and you know, and uh, so we need to get back to normality uh, quickly. Uh, after this uh, crisis, uh, this COVID crisis uh, blows away. Okay, so, uh, Professor Professor Leiko, very quickly, your your take on it. I, and I, put up, I do apologize. Uh, part of these abnormal times, we don't have as much time as we have. But uh, Professor Leiko, your, quickly, your take on on that on that paper. Well, I think uh, we have to focus on uh, our survival mode. Uh, basically, uh, we have to protect and bring back our food supply. Uh, uh, this has been uh, disrupted. It has been disrupted seriously. And if we are not able to address that, 
uh, it will uh, cause more uh, serious problems uh, for us. We have to uh, lay out the uh, safety nets that uh, I think uh, were already being planned. But uh, in terms of delivery, we have to uh, make sure that uh, the uh, uh, sectors who need them the most uh, will be uh, will receive them uh, immediately. Okay, uh, Socioeconomic Planning Secretary Ernesto Pernia and Professor Emmanuel Leco, maraming salamat po for joining us. We do hope everybody keeps safe and keep well. Ingat po. Maraming salamat po sa lahat ng ginagawa niyo. Keep well and stay uh, safe, uh, uh, Robbie. And uh, uh, Manny Leco. Papa. So, okay, uh, stay safe, uh, stay healthy. Uh, Robby, Secretary Pernia, and to all our uh, viewers tonight. Okay, maraming salamat po ulit. And that's all for this edition of The Cheese. We hope what was discussed here will keep the conversation going. I'm Robbie Alampay. Please keep safe. We are One News.